Hello everybody, welcome. My name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist. And today we are going live to paint our beautiful hot air balloon in a really fun tropical scene with palm trees and a little sailboat. So I've got the model behind me and we've done a little bit of rearranging today. I have to thank my awesome and handsome hubby. So he's created this to where I feel like you can see it a lot better because I used to be back here trying to paint with this table far away. And so anyway, he is genius and he created this. So I think you can see the paint a lot better from now on. So I can turn it and we can adjust and work much closer to you too. So still keeping it relational with live, but also better viewing for the tutorial. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about our awesome kit that we have for y'all so that we can do all this. I'm working on my tray, so I, this is actually, I did some of this. Hello, Shannon. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so some of this I actually just did on the canvas for the first time today because I kind of went off, uh, well, I became creative. <laughs> so this was my original, and I decided to bring the hot air balloon as more of a focal point to the front because I wanted this idea of rising up. Right now, a lot of us have obstacles in our life, and so I'm trying to send this really inspirational message about us all rising up and getting lots of beautiful fresh air and having a great time. So here's my little message. Breathe new life into your dreams. There it is. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, so that's our awesome message, and then this is going to be our painting for that. All right, so I've got a trace, but I do want to show you this. Now, this isn't all of it. This is just kind of what I worked up initially. So I ink this out, and then we use graphite paper now, and we can trace it all out so it makes it so much easier. Super, super easy, and I sell the graphite paper with our kit. So we've got that, and then, of course, we sell paint for you if you need it. Yay, me too. <laughs> so the comment is, uh, I love the hot air balloon bigger, and I do too. So you could just barely see it back there. And now it's like, yay, big hot air balloon. All right, so yes, and with our kit, we've got brushes and paint and canvas and graphite paper, and we'll have all the line art for you, so everything. And yes, thank you so much, Shannon. Appreciate that. All right, so now what we're going to do, let me tell you something else about how I do my stuff. So if you're working at home, I actually recommend... You could just paint it all first, then let it set up and dry, then come back in with your graphite paper and your tracing, and you could just work it in over the top. You can do it just like me if you want to, but you certainly don't have to. So what I do is I outline everything in a heavy Sharpie, that way I know it bleeds through the paint, and then that way it allows me to just put all the paint down onto the surface, and then I'll be able to see my lines pop back out again so it just makes it super easy for me all right so but either way either way it's up to you both are pretty fun and easy and you just but if you don't have a sharpie then of course you want to just go ahead and use pencil and then you want to go ahead and I would say do all the background color first then definitely do that because if you do all your background color well you're gonna have to because pencil will not show through so that makes that decision for you all right so here we go, we've got all of our paints ready to go off to the side. I've been working a lot already, so I've got a lot already out for myself here. And then I also have a bucket of water. And then I've got my brushes nearby. And for this first stage here, I'm going to start with a really lovely sky. And I'm gonna change my sky a little bit on this one too. Yes, love the Sharpie. It does help, doesn't it? Yeah, I agree. Um, Hmm. Okay, so my sky in this other one, it was very sunny and bright, and I do like it. I'm, I'm thinking about a lavender sky. I don't know. <laughs> now, I, now I'm looking at it going, actually, I may really like that sky. I may just stick with that. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and start with a little bit of some white here. Big dollop of white. And then I'm going to do a little touch of the blue. Just make that white and blue to start with really pale and I want a hint of lavender I'm gonna go back to my other idea with lavender I'm being so crazy right now I can't make up my mind being womanly <laughs> 
All right, I'm going to grab a little bit of some violet. So I've got this really pretty light blue mixed up. So I picked up a big dollop of white, little touch of the blue. Now I'm going to touch into a little bit of some beautiful violet, push that in. So that's what I want first, and I still want a lot of white in here. So I'm going to push this across my canvas up here and make sure you guys can see it. There we go. Very beautiful, a little bit of lavender happening up here. And then I want a little touch of blue in here too. Hello, Deborah. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, and if y'all have uh, painting supplies already at home, feel free to send me a reminder to get all these digital uploads going so I can get that online as well. Sometimes I'm a little bit behind with that. And I also need to do a tutorial on a little trick that you can do to transfer. If you do not have graphite paper, there's another way to do it with a with using your pencil on the back. And I still haven't done that tutorial. You know, I need to do that today. I should do that today. But that'll help out a lot. And then that way I can just upload the trace, the line art, and you can do that at home if you already have all your supplies. Or you can order our, our whole kit, but some people have a lot of supplies already. All right, so we've got a lot of lavender here, a lot of white, a little bit of that cobalt blue. And at some point here, pretty quick, I am going to shift gears to some warmer, sunnier tones. And I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of cut and work here. So I'm taking my brush. Why well, didn't talk about my brushes at all? I've been so busy talking about this line art. So I am using my mama brush, by the way, which is the biggest brush that I have. It's a half inch flat. So I'm working that into the background here. And for the most part, when I go ahead and push in this background color, I just try to hold the brush more flat to the surface, parallel to the canvas, and that will help you get really good coverage into that area. Then when you start to do all of your cutting work, then I wanna shift gears a little bit, turn that brush more to this side, basically a hole just a lot like a pencil. So that'll give you a nice thin line edge, and then that will help you do the cut-in work that comes around here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that cut-in work. And then as I feather it back out into the background, then I'll go ahead and then turn that brush handle more over to the side. light feathery strokes back there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and touch into a little bit of some yellow as I go. And just kind of lightly push that into the mix. Bringing a little bit of sunshine in. strokes back and forth here. I'm going to switch back to my initial color coming back over to this side. Do the cut and work. Line art around that shape. This is more of that light blue. With a little bit of that lavender. just back and forth. And so if you didn't have the line art here in the beginning, of course you could just sweep that back and forth. It would be a really nice therapeutic process for you. So again, lots of white, little bit of blue, little bit of violet here in the background. 
Now, another stroke that you can do here is more of a cross stroke. So let me show you that too. Hi, Christopher, welcome. <laughs> you can do a little cross stroke if you want. So just crisscross it back and forth. So that is another option. Now I'm going to definitely make this quite a bit lighter because I want really good contrast between my sky and the water that will come in pretty quickly. So if my sky is just way, way too blue, then it just matches the ocean and then I lose that horizon line. So that's why I have to be a little bit thoughtful about making this background a little bit lighter and different. So I'm gonna come back in with more of this light blue and a little bit of that lavender color. Cut in around these pretty little palm trees here. Do a little bit of a cross stroke, just back and forth. Now, I think I'm going to, yeah, I think I'm going to do a little bit of some pretty magenta in the sky. So here is my primary magenta. And I'm going to do a little touch of this too. So as it softly blends, it will go to like more of a like hot pink, a little bit of that, but then it'll go to a light pink too and it starts to touch into that white. And so that's going to be a really pretty color in the sky. So I'm doing a little touch of the magenta and the white. It's also pushing it to some more of those lavender tones too, since it's getting a little bit of a soft blend with that blue. I'm gonna push this through. There's that little bit of peekaboo space happening with my hot air balloon in there. I'm going to switch more to this little cross stroke. I want more of that little textural effect happening in here. And I want more of my pink to really be popping out in front. Yes, I know. <laughs> Made a difficult choice on the sky. It's a little bit challenging, isn't it? Because that one's really pretty too. That's why I couldn't make up my mind. Now you understand my struggle. <laughs> It's like, oh, I don't know, I kind of like them both. But the one back here, I did more of like a soft gold with a white. And then I pushed a lot more white into it. So I'm definitely going more to these pink tones as I get closer to the water because I definitely want that contrast to happen. Kind of lightly feather that out. And a little bit more pink over here. And since we're trying something new, hi Donna! <laughs> uh, I want to make sure y'all can all see. Of course, I'll come back and look at the video later too. But I want to make sure. We can see everything really well over here, especially if it gets closer to me. Pushing in a little bit more of that magenta over there on that side. And then let's do a little bit more of that crosshatch stroke. So it looks like little tiny X's back and forth. Just kind of keep softly blending that back into the background. All right. Yeah. I'm seeing a little, hold on, I'm seeing a little spot up there that I'm not super happy with. It's not quite blended in. So 
So a little bit of soft feathering there. And I'll grab a little bit more white. This is starting to set up and dry a little bit, so I need to come back in with some more wet paint. Just kind of softly blend into that. All right, so beautiful. There's our lovely sky. And I definitely started to pull in a lot more of that magenta as I came closer to the ocean. So that's what we'll work on next is our ocean color. All right, so I'm gonna take my mama brush. Hi, Deborah. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, me too. Thank you for noticing. Yeah, I have um, been filming a lot. <laughs> so. Um, and so much, I've been working so much to the point where I didn't really take a, some time to go back and look at my videos, and yesterday I did that, and I realized that I couldn't see the painting very well, and that really bothered me. So, I'm trying to, and I just, and with my brain, I was not able to quite figure it out. You wouldn't believe how hard it is, so we figured out we had to create a little V like this and then put the tripod in the middle. But it's still hard to create that, so my husband made me this special stand here for my painting, which, which can move. So you can tell me at some point, like if you can't see, tell me to move it <laughs> in a nice way. <laughs> and I will. All right, so I think, speaking of that, I think you can see, let's do that so you can see. All right. Um, so let's see here. I need to do some beautiful ocean colors now. And thank you, Sarah. <laughs> and hi, Sarah. <laughs> All right, let's do some beautiful ocean. So we need some Viridian. This is one of my most favorite colors here. It looks like a beautiful teal color. All right, so I'm going to push some of this over here to the side. And then my ocean's going to have that viridian color and then also some primary cyan blue. And then we're gonna do a lot of white too. I'll be pushing a lot of white in there. All right, so I want my mama brush again. And so let's talk about how I clean off mama. So I take the mama brush and I go ahead and push it into the bucket of water and then that will definitely help clean it off. I do a lot of circular motions, firm pressure that helps release that paint. Then I want to make sure that I completely dry it off pretty well so where it's just moist and then it's ready to go for the next step. All right, so now I've got my brush all ready to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick up some of that white, big dollop of white. And then, so we'll do a touch of that white and we'll start to just touch into those other colors, a little bit of that blue and then a little bit of that Viridian. And we'll mix all those together. And then I'll go ahead and sweep this into the background here. Now, as I do my horizon line, I let the line edge of the brush help me out with that, help stabilize it. So I go ahead and turn that brush more like a pencil. And what I mean by that is just like a pencil hold, so to speak. So that way the brush is actually coming down towards the canvas. Gives me more control. And then it also helps me make that beautiful line edge. Now, sometimes I'll turn it over to the side, just like that. That helps too. But then when I have to do my cut-in work, then I'll go ahead and work around that little shape there. So again, Viridian, a little bit of blue, a little bit of white. Push all those together. Take it underneath our little boat here. All 
I'll push this all the way across. And some of this blending I want to happen on the canvas. So I'll actually go ahead and touch into a little bit of that pure blue and I'll push that all the way across. And I'm holding the brush a little bit more on the flat side now, parallel to the canvas. And I'll push into a little bit of that Viridian. Really like that too, that's really pretty. Take that all the way across too. And then even some of that pure white is really awesome. So I'll take that all the way across too. And with a little bit of planning here, see I'm getting next to those palm trees and I want a little bit more contrast happening there. So, and this is definitely a time when I'm going to cheat a little bit. Well, thank you. <laughs> And I'm gonna just go right to the palm tree. Oh, you know what? I forgot my sky up here. Well, what a little Dorcasaurus I am. Hold on a second. Okay, let me use my mama brush again and push into a little bit of that magenta and that color we had in the beginning, the white and the magenta. All right, so right in here, I forgot the rest of my sky. And see, it's so much easier. I'm gonna go ahead and allow that Sharpie to bleed through, and that way I can just paint all the way through it. It just makes it so much easier. So a little bit of white, a little bit of magenta. All right. All right. Phew, easy fix. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, me too. And I haven't even posted this yet because I just created it last night, so I promise I'll actually go post it online for people. That would help, wouldn't it? I mean, I had the original, but I mean, it completely changed. So I'm gonna post this one today so that people can actually choose this one. All right, so I've got my Viridian and my blue and my white, and I'm gonna go ahead and sweep this into the background. This is more of that water coming through here. Yes, I'm originally a California girl, born in Huntington Beach, California, so the true love for the ocean. I find it to be super painful, peaceful and healing. I just love it. And then the more of these colors that you wanna see peek through in front, then just go into them directly with your brush. So for example, if you're loving that Viridian, then I would just do a little dab into that pure color and just lay it right on the top and just lightly kind of drag it across there. And see that way it'll really peek through a lot more. And then a little bit of that cyan blue. Take that all the way across, and then maybe a little bit of white. We'll take that all the way across. Yay. Okay, so now is beach time. Okay, so I'm gonna take my mama brush, put it into the water here. I need some warmer tones for my beach. So I'm still going to be using my mama brush, but the color tones will be, I'll do a big dollop of white here. Big dollop of white. And then a little touch of that primary yellow. Hey, maybe I should show y'all. <laughs> hey, way to go, teacher. All right, a uh, big dollop of white. Little touch of the primary yellow. And then, you know what? Let's do a little tiny, tiny touch of the black. So I'm gonna take my brush, just barely dip into the black. That might even be a bit much. I'm gonna push a little bit of that off to the side. So 
I just want a super tiny amount, push that into that color and that will give me a really pretty toe. That's more of that, these are those sugar sands that we see at the beach, really lovely. And then I'll also keep some of those pure colors nearby and I'll be pushing those through as well. So I'm gonna push this through. This is my sandy beach here. And again, that is my white. And then that primary yellow, which right now I'm sort of pushing that through in a pure state. It's kind of nice to see it peekaboo on the canvas in a pure blend there. In with the rest of that taupe color. And I'll also keep working in with that taupe color that we mixed up as well. Which again, recap on that is the white and the primary yellow and then just a tiny little touch of the black. I'll push that through. Now I want to do a little bit more white here. Another little layer of white right over the top. And then we're gonna go ahead and do just a little bit of that that soft white blending that happens where the beach meets the ocean here. All right, so I'm gonna be a little bit heavier handed now with the white and I'll do a little tap, tap, tap over the surface here. And I definitely try to wiggle the brush a little bit. It's not completely, it's not just a perfect line on this at all. So this is where we can loosen up a little bit. and become a, quite a bit more textural. And I'm just doing more of what I would call more of like a pounce effect. So I actually take the brush, I'm tapping a little bit on the front surface of the canvas. And I'll just go ahead and work that all the way across here. The other thing you need too is kind of lay it on the flat side as well. Hello, low, <laughs> or hi, low, that sounds better. <laughs> So still a tapping motion, but this time I tap flat side of the brush and then that gives me even more texture. And I'm going to avoid that little palm tree area just so I can see it really well. So it gives us that Lovely little wave texture coming in. And I'll kind of lightly feather this out into the beach. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of that white and just kind of streak it through the beach here. Hello, my friend. Hope you're having an amazing, awesome day. Well, thank you. Same to you. <laughs> my brush keeps picking up my hair. I let my hair go naturally curly today, so it's super wild. We have all this rain happening here, so. I'm not used to my hair getting in the way so much when I paint, but you know, the hazards of big, wild, curly hair. <laughs> so I'll just deal with it as I go. All right, so sweeping motions across there, very fun. Okay, so decisions. Now we can go back up and start to deal with color that's happening up here. So let's see, let's see, what are we gonna do? I'm trying to think what color I wanna make things. I'm also going to work into that just a teeny bit. It'll start to bleed through here in a minute. All right. So I want, hmm. Let's do a sunflower. 
Let's do a little sunflower on our cute little flower here. I'm going to be using my little bit brush and some bright primary yellow paint with just a little touch of the white with it. So I'll push this into all those little petal shapes there. Again, this is a little bit and just primary yellow. Of course, she, <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, my dream one day is to have my own brush line with my family because if you go to the store and you say, I'm looking for mama and little buddy a little bit, <laughs> they're not going to be able to help you unless, <laughs> you know, it's the tipsy artist brush kit and then they will know so dream big <laughs> all right bright primary yellow but if for now this is I think people normally call this a liner brush or a round yeah But we have it in our kit, so you don't even have to know. You can just buy it from me. Okay, beautiful little sunflower. Okay, so now I wanna do some really pretty little green leaves off to the side. So let's see here, I want, I've got my cadmium green. Let's go ahead and do, I've got this in the kit too. This is a really pretty little bright yellow green, or you can mix up some bright primary yellow and some green too, and that will also give you a nice bright green color. So still using my little bit brush, and I'll do a little twist here into the paint. And then I'll go ahead and paint into these little shapes here. And then over here to this side. And it looks a little bit raw right now, that's okay. We'll definitely be firming up the details on this here in a little bit. Right now we're just doing what I call color blocking. So we just get all those basic colors into the mix first. All right, super lovely. Let's see here. I'm still debating on what color I want my hot air balloon to be. <laughs> so I'm avoiding that decision. Oh my goodness. I don't know if I want it to be red or not. I guess it could be red. Just like that one. I may just go back to that just to not have to think. Uh, I am going to do a little red sailboat here. So I'm going to take my little bit brush again, go into the red paint, just dip right into it. And then go ahead and do the whole boat here with that really pretty red color. Now when you're using a really small brush to paint into here, you can use, again, just hold like a pencil to do the detail work. And then it helps when you wanna get better coverage over the surface into a small space. You just want to barely turn that handle over to the side. Thanks for all the hearts. Yay. <laughs> and then let's do, yeah, let's just go ahead and do the hot air balloon red. That'll be fun. I'll stop thinking about it. Just commit to it. So I'm still using my little bit brush. We have lots of little curves here. 
we have some smaller areas to work into. Getting all the curves done first and then we'll switch gears to our mama brush to go ahead and do the fill-in work. All right, beautiful. So I'm gonna switch to mama now. Mama brush and then just more of that beautiful red color. And then since I've got my work already done and I know it will definitely bleed through here, then I'm just going to paint all the way over that surface area. So I'm just getting that first coat down. So it is a little bit light and streaky at this stage, but I will definitely come back over the surface area again to help cover that up. And then that will definitely require a little bit of a brush change up in terms of how I hold it. Using the line edge here. So getting better coverage now, I turn that handle more over to the side. And when you work back in and around the little sunflower, you may have to switch back over to your little bit brush. I'm gonna to try to go ahead and just use the line edge to cut in between each one of those little petals. Because I can do that by making little tiny bees. And that little bit of yellow softly blending in with the red doesn't really do anything to change the color, so I'm okay. I mean, it might warm it up just a little bit, but it's going to be a nice blend. It's going to be a nice mix. And then I'll do my line edge all the way around here. And that's the easiest way to do a long line edge is with your uh, longest line of a brush. That would be our mama brush in this case. And then when we fill in, we just go ahead and hold that brush parallel to the canvas. And then let's feather that out. So now I'm working on getting a little bit better coverage over the surface here. So I'll dip into the red, but now I turn it a little bit more parallel to the canvas. cross strokes over and over again. Yay, love it. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my little bucket where the little people sit. This hot air balloon is just carrying flowers across our planet, so. All right, so little buddy now in some black. And we'll just fill this in. And then I want tiny little line edges to connect so I wanna make sure that my little buddy brush is thinned out where the line edge, so I gotta do some firm pressure here. Let me show you what I'm doing. So I'll push into that black and then firm pressure back and forth because I wanna make sure my line edge is nice and thin. Well, thank you. <laughs> so 
So there it is, and then I'll kind of feather that back out. I also want a little black circle in the middle of my little sunflower here. So here's what I do. I take the little buddy brush, place it right in the center, push out for a half circle, and then I'll do the same thing to the other side. Push out for the other half circle. That's super lovely. And we haven't even done any of our line work yet, which will make a lot of this really pop out to the surface. So right now, again, we're still just doing that color blocking. All right, so now, about ready to, I'm gonna do a little bit more, let this set up and dry. Do a little bit of our white here in our sailboat. So let's do little buddy brush again. I just gave little buddy a bath. And then we'll go ahead and position some just pure white into this sailboat. Now, rarely is anything just pure, pure white, so I may just do a little touch of some light gray in there as well. So I just barely touch into the black. I don't want to do that directly onto the canvas because it could just darken it up way too much to begin with, so I'm going to do a soft blend over here to the side to make sure it's very, very light first. And it is, now it's a very, very light gray. So I'll go ahead and push into this shape now with a little touch more of that light gray. And then you might even touch into a tiny amount, teeny tiny amount of that primary yellow. Almost gives it a little bit of an antique to look. And maybe it's catching a little bit of reflection from the sun. Right, let's get this little section here. All right, so again, just color blocking. We'll definitely work in some dark outlines later. And then I'm noticing I've got a little bit of my Sharpie sort of peeking through here, so I'm gonna come back in and pounce in a little bit more white texture over the surface. All right, now we need to push in our palm trees. Okay, so I, hmm, let's see here. Let's go back with Mama again, because she's got that nice thin line edge. And then I want some Viridian. So just as a visual reference here, that's what it looks like in the tube. So I'm gonna start with that, and I might as well just get some more while I'm at it. I'm gonna go ahead and do some cadmium green, too. I already have that out of my plate. That's just a basic green. So a little bit of this viridian and a little bit of that cadmium. We'll push those two together. And then I'll work the line edge of the brush into those shapes of the palm tree. So we have that beautiful trace there for you, so it makes it really easy to work into. So that's really all I'm doing, is just working into that trace. Doing that, more that cut-in work first. And I want to get just a nice thick coat of paint right over the top. We'll work on texture here in a minute. But I just want to get good coverage right over the surface area. This is that first coat. By the way, another option you can do here is the palm trees can be more like a silhouette effect over the front. That's done a lot too in paintings and that's super easy. So you would just, in that situation, you would just fill it all in black. So we're gonna be a little bit more textural today, but 
could always just do pure black into this shape, and that would also be really lovely. All right, so I'm about to meet the trunk, so I'll go ahead and stop there, and then I'll work into this next shape. As I go, I may do a little touch of black in this too, just so I can, it's okay if I darken it up a little bit. And if that concerns you a little bit that it was going into the white, keep in mind that at home, you can always let it just completely set up and dry before you move into that next section that way you don't have to deal with any challenges with working out blends like that and I did pick up a lot of white on this so as I pick it up on my brush I'm gonna drag it off on my plate so that I don't keep working it into the paint here Push back into that viridian. And again, a little bit more of that cadmium green as a base. We're gonna push that in there too. So this is just that foundation. Here in a minute, we're gonna work in some texture. All right, so I've got trunks now to do. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, we are doing them in Guthrie every Saturday for right now. Because Guthrie is about the safest place in the world right now. We have really low counts of all of that um, Corona stuff. COVID stuff, whatever they call it now. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> Come see us in Gathery. I'm gonna try to do them every Saturday. Cause we have lots of room here and we can social distance everybody. All right, so now I'm working in tree trunks and I'm just doing pure black, still using my mama brush. I'll start with that line edge first and then just work that in solid all the way through, being pretty simple about this. Now I'm gonna do the framework of the branches through the tree. So I want to make sure my line edge is very thin. So I take that, press back and forth, thin that out quite a bit. And then we're going to start to push them out into little tiny branches that have curves to them. And so that I know where I need to go, I basically just follow the direction of my template. So I have, I've got these little sections all coming out. So I just take it and I push this one into that section. And I push this one into that section. It's gonna look a little weird at first. And then I do that section. Just big soft curves. Ta da! Isn't that fun? Not done yet. <laughs> I said ta da! Like I was finished. I'm not done. I don't know why I did that. It's an early ta da. <laughs> Keep taking these around. All right, so now more texture on top of that. Switch brushes. So let's go to little bit. And then we're going to do a little twist into the black paint. 
and twist that out. Gives me a nice fine point. And then off of each branch here, I'll do just little tiny curves that represent those palm trees. So tiny little curves off of each side. And this is also softly blending into that green, so it's giving a nice textural look. So a little twist here, and then, again, just little slight curves. Now we're starting to see the texture of the palm trees. And as I do this, I keep twisting the head of the brush back into the paint so that it keeps giving me that nice fine point. and it's really nice to have that framework already there for you so you don't have to worry about what direction you need to go into. You just go with the flow and do those little curves into the existing shape that's already there. And then with this one, then I'll just, off of each one of these curves, I'll just keep feathering that out. It's kind of like making a parenthesis. So I'll just do that off to each side. Feather that back down into that shape there. All right, really pretty palm trees. We've got those in place. Okay, so now we need to do some of our really fine detail work to help make things kind of pop out in front too. All right, so I need to work in a lot of little tiny black lines to begin with. So I've got a nice clean little bit brush here. This is my smallest brush. I do a little twist here into the black paint again. And then let's go ahead and do a nice outline around this little sailboat. Because we worked in our color blocking earlier. And I wanna make sure that this stands out over the top. And make sure it's real thin. Mine's getting thick. It gets filled with paint, makes the bristles kind of do this. So you gotta make sure and twist it back out into the paint. And that'll give you a nice fine point again. So now I've got little tiny details. It's really tiny here around those little tiny petals. This will definitely help with our sunflower. And I'm also kind of helping stabilize my hand for these tinier details, using my pinky to help do that. So I just rest the weight of my hand on my pinky, just kind of acts like training wheels on a bike. You have to be really delicate with this step. 
because you want to make sure you still keep all of your yellow intact. So it's just a really tiny little line. Another little trick here is let it all set up and completely dry and use a Sharpie to do this. That will be much more precise. And then the more, the finer the point, you could, it really may make it even that much easier for you. So I love Sharpies. Oops. Oh, that was, oh, uh oh, that's a tragic thing happening, about to happen. I gotta smooth that out. And then we've got five little leaves here. So my little leaf shapes, basically kind of like little parentheses, little parentheses. That's basically the shape of that leaf. Go right back over the center again. Nice soft circle in there. And then we've got a lot of details up here we gotta do. So, let's do the small ones first. Little curves happening there. Still using a little bit for even these little small curves up here. Here in a minute, I will switch over to the mama when I do the really long lines. Lettering time. All right, so I'm gonna take that same little bit brush. And again, you want that comfortable hold. Hold it just like you'd hold a pencil or pen. Remember to keep twisting it out so that you get a nice fine point. And then we'll work into that letter. So I've got that done. And if you wanna do your lettering a different color too, you certainly can. Like maybe white over the top of this would be really pretty too. If you are going to do that, definitely let it set up and dry, and then use your graphite paper to trace over the top, and then fill that in at the very end of the process. You'd never want to try to work in white paint while it's all still wet. It would be really challenging. <laughs> I'm not saying impossible, but unnecessarily hard. We don't want anything to be hard. We want everything to be easy and fun. This font's really fun because it's got a lot of thickness to it, so it makes it really easy to paint into. And also when you're doing loops, make sure you go around the loop so that it maintains the negative space in the center so they don't lose the, the nice shape of that letter. Got another one coming up here with my E, so I'll make sure and come around it. I don't want to put any firm pressure on the inside. That's when we tend to lose those loop shapes. So this is going to say, rise up. That's what we're all going to do. All 
All right, so now I need to fill out a little bit more of those thin lines. Switching back over to my little mama brush here. I'll do some firm pressure pushes into the black paint so that I maintain that nice thin line on the edge. And then I'll take this section here around. Go back in with my little bit brush. Kind of firm up that little curve here at the top again. It's a little bit more rounded, so I'll firm that up. Oh, and I see another little tiny line here. before I get too close to these little sunflower petals. I'm gonna go ahead and use my smaller brush to do this little line work in here. Well, I may all, I may do all of it, we'll see. Maybe a little bit of back and forth here. I got a little spot there. Do a few little white accents here. So I've got my little bit brush again, little touch of white. And then I'll do a little soft curve there. And then I'll do little tiny highlights on just a few spaces here on my little sunflower. So this is really subtle. Put little highlights on those petals, makes those pop out a little bit. going to go into a little bit of some gold. I want a little bit of a highlight happening on my hot air balloon, but I don't want it to be so contrasting as the white. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of some gold paint. A little twist here. Kind of push that in a little bit here too. Just helps accentuate those soft curves. into black. Uh-oh. When did that happen? All right, so just touch that up one more time with gold. I definitely want that to be gold, not black in there. Now keep these little gold accents just happening all throughout here.
think I'm getting really close. So a little bit more of a gold accent here too. And you know what, I want a little touch more of some white accent on my sailboat. So I'll do a soft line there. One here. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I could do some fun little accents in the trees. So let's show you what this looks like. This is fun. All right, let's see here. Uh, let's do Little Buddy. And then let's get some, a little bit of that magenta, primary magenta here. This is really subtle, but it is a nice look, I think. So you can take your little buddy brush here. I'm gonna push into that magenta. I can do a little bit of white in there too, so it kind of goes a little bit lighter pink. And then just Every so often here, I do just a little touch of that magenta here in the tree. And then a few more here. So this is just a soft echo of the stroke we've already done in the past. So we're just reinforcing that with a little bright highlight of color. And then I'll even just lightly kind of drag that down the surface area of the trunk. It's a pretty little accent. You can also do maybe just a few little tiny touches of some gold in there too. So still using our little buddy, little touch of some gold now. And the shapes on these, again, it just kind of feels like big parentheses, but we're just kind of following the line work, the framework of that tree, the palm tree. And then just one soft little blend down the length there, the sketch there. Man, I think I'm done. I think so. It's funny, when I look, I can see my painting here, but when I look up there, I can't see any of it. Because <laughs> I see all these friendly faces and conversation. It looks awesome. But I'll take a look at it later, see what it looks like in the... Oh, I just want to make sure y'all can see it really well since we did our new test today of how all this looks. So hopefully you can see it a lot better in the shot. And then our final step here, I will come back in. If I see any peekaboo, I'll do a little bit more like white wave cap. Let me touch that up a little bit. And then, of course, signing of the masterpiece. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> But signing the masterpiece, okay, because normally signature is done in the right hand side, but we've got a lot happening here uh, with the composition. So today I would actually do it here, and I always usually sign mine later. I like to make sure and photograph it first without a signature on there. Um, but yes, so this is our beautiful painting. Looks good. And I promise I'll go load it up on the website right after this. So if you need the line art, you can certainly do it at home. Yes, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a beautiful day. And, oh, thank you, Mary Lee. That's so nice. Thank you. Yep, I'll be here again every week, almost every day. Um, 
have to run into town tomorrow, but Thursday, I'll be painting with y'all again on Thursday. And I think we're doing Thursday and Friday and Saturday. <laughs> we're doing more Christmas in July. So that's happening. I think we've got Santa's cupcake and a uh, Buffalo check snowman coming up Thursday and Friday. And so that's gonna be really cute. Those are super fun. And I cannot remember what I'm doing on Saturday. Something, I have two shows on Saturday. So I'm gonna come live with y'all online. And then we also have an in-studio show. So if you just happen to be local, come see us in Guthrie, Oklahoma. We'll have a studio show there as well. So we've got lots of fun stuff. But yes, thank you so much for painting with me today. It's been so fun. And remember, breathe new life into your dreams. So that's what this painting was all about today. We're gonna rise up. Facing tough obstacles, we're gonna rise up. Yay, let's do it. <laughs> Good job. All right, so we will see you soon. Have a beautiful day.